Hey guys, I want to tell you about a very important undercover tactic that we use that involves female operators. I don't like to give away tactics because by doing that, it puts people at risk and maybe we rescue less kids. But based on the allegations that are flying around and the questions being asked, we've decided that it's better to tell you these tactics so that we can preserve the vehicle that continues to rescue children. And so I'm going to tell you, and while I do so, I'm going to pay homage, respect, love, and gratitude for these female operators who serve such an important role, maybe the most important role in rescue operations. You need to understand that children don't just fall out of the sky. They don't fall into your desk. It's a very proactive work and it's dirty and it's ugly and nothing about it could possibly relate to the world that the rest of us live in. Going undercover to find children is wading through a sewer. These children are found in places like strip clubs, brothels, dirty spas, places where high-end escorts are controlling the, the situations, traffickers. So if I am a man or one of my operators walks into one of these places and is approached by a trafficker trying to put a child to, to, to service, on that person or a sex worker and that man now you think about this and that man that operator doesn't partake of what's being offered they lose credibility they're kicked out of the place and no one's going to get rescued and so we came up with a concept that we call the couple's ruse or the couple a couple's tactic where you go in together pretending to be a husband or a wife or boyfriend girlfriend now you go in and one of you or could, could pretend that, yes, I, I want to partake in this sex act with this woman or this child, you know, but I can't because my girlfriend won't let me, but maybe we can do it later. So is that cool? Like, let's keep talking and, and she'll warm up to it eventually. That's one idea. There's a hundred different ways to do it, but the bottom line is we block for each other. So the trafficker sees the situation, recognizes that I have every excuse not to partake, and he won't kick me out. And now I have the opportunity to build rapport, to get more intel, to dig deeper. It has worked. Hundreds, maybe thousands of children on my watch have been rescued using this amazing tactic. But it hurts. It beats you up. I just listened to my wife on Ron Arquette last night and I cried as I listened to what she was saying that it requires great healing. I've been doing this for almost 20 years. I'm, I'm grateful to tell you that we, we draw lines. We have rules, very specific rules. So we keep our morality and, and my faith, keep my covenants that I've made with my wife. And I have. And so I wanna thank all of you who have sacrificed men and women who have sacrificed so much. I know what you're dealing with because I deal with it. And now's the time for me to heal. The sound of freedom has made it impossible for me to do operations anymore because it got too big and it probably saved my life. As I've had these talks over the last several weeks with these amazing heroic female operators, they want their voices heard. They want you to know what it's been like for them working with me and other operators. You, the supporters, you, the donors, it's time for you to look under the hood and you can make your own decision about these tactics. But I wanna pay homage to these female operators. I wanna give them their opportunity to tell their story and bear their witness to the amazing work that they have done working with our teams. So please, over the next several days, listen to their testimonies, listen to the work they've done and thank God for them for rescuing 